Good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're going to be painting another western scene, but before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm going to put a reference photo over here on the right hand side so you can take a look. It's a fairly simple photo. We've got this uh, cowboy here with uh, a rifle aimed downrange. And uh, the horse is in a bit of a, an action pose, so that'll be kind of interesting. But again, very simple. Our sky and ground are typically going to be our lighter tones, and then we're going to move into darker tones with our, our figure here. Since it's so simple, I do want to try to add some abstractions and try to keep things interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and spray our paper just a little bit there. And I'm going to just get these pails wet here. Get some of that color moving down. And I'm just going to take a bit of dirty water and just kind of throw it all over our scene here. And since this is going to be primarily our first wash, our sky and ground here, that'll help keep things a bit lighter. I've got some cobalt blue, a little cerulean. And we're just gonna, again, just give it a bit of that abstract flair. I don't want the sky to be all perfect. I'm gonna add a little lavender in there. And we're just gonna let that run. All right. Now, as I mentioned before, now our cowboy and this horse here are gonna be darker tones than our sky and ground. So I don't really need to worry too much about painting around them. I can just paint right through them. I've got a bit of a hard edge I want to soften there. All right. And let's warm up our foreground here. Got some burnt sienna, a little yellow ochre. And we're going to do that same kind of thing here where we just sort of abstract everything in here. Now, as we're down closer to the bottom, we're going to get a bit darker and a bit thicker with our pigment here. And I'm just making some abstract, trying to really thicken up our paint here. Maybe add just a bit of kind of some darker horizon line there. Okay. I think, let's see, is there anything else I want to do? I'm going to grab one of my other brushes. I'm going to try to put just some, some almost pure pigment down here at the bottom. And I'm going to use my brush and sort of just splatter that paint down there. And again, I'm focusing on keeping that primarily on the bottom down there. As our figure gets closer to us, we're gonna have darker and darker colors. So I'm gonna to try to blot out, got into our sky a little bit, but that is okay. Again, we're going for more of that kind of abstract feel. Okay, so let's let this dry. We're gonna come back and we will start our figure. All right, we're back. This is now completely dry. I think this turned out very nicely. We've got some little abstractions, some dark speckling in here. Looks really nice, but let's go ahead and get started on our main figure. Now, our figure is going to be made up of two tones. I want you to think of your paintings in three tones, but specifically the figure and this horse here are going to be two tones. Our first tone was just the sky and background, and with these next two tones, we're going to get a bit darker. So, let's start off with our hat, and we'll work our way down. I'm just going to use a warm color, and that's a little yellow ochre there. Let me grab a smaller brush. When you're doing sort of more detailed work like this, you do want to have a smaller brush that you can use. And something else I want to be thinking about <clears throat> as I work through this is making sure to leave a few areas of light within our figure just for little highlights and things. I'm going to have a bit more of an orange color here for the face. And we'll let that bleed into the hat there. All right. And now for the shirt. 
Now my reference photo is in black and white, so I can really choose what I want here. But since we've gone so warm with the face and hat there, it might be nice to cool things down a bit. If we give him sort of a, maybe a blue-gray shirt. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of Chinese white here. And again, I want to try, if I can, to let my brush kind of dance around a little bit. I want this figure to have some, some feel and some, some liveliness to him. Let me pick up some more of that paint. And let's warm it back up again for the kind of gloves. I'll do something a bit, a bit darker there. Maybe put in just a little bit of that burnt sienna there and kind of let that bleed in. And he's got this rifle here, which we're gonna keep warm as well. And we'll darken up the barrel here. All right. Okay, that looks pretty nice. I'm going to grab a little water just to spray it, keep it alive. Let's keep working. I'm going to get some more of that kind of lavendery color we had going to finish off the shirt there. And then we've got some kind of saddlebags and luggage back here. Again, does not need to be perfect. We're just suggesting things here. Okay. And we'll put in some brown there. And that'll be for the pants and the horse as well. So I'm just going to keep this nice and warm as we work through here. Now, something I haven't done a good job of here has been leaving gaps of light for our figure. So I need to be careful about that. All right. Stay nice and inside our shapes. Okay. And I know it looks a little bit like nothing right now, but I'm just trying to get my first marks down. And I'll come back and take this brush and, and go right up to the edges. I'm just kind of getting things started. All right, let's finish some of these ears off here. Okay. Yep, looks nice. Good straight line there. I'm going to spray it with a little bit more water. Again, just trying to keep everything alive here. Let's come down to the legs. And if you don't have a small brush like this, you can get away with a larger brush. You just need to make sure it's got a good tip on it and just really take your time. I think these smaller brushes are always gonna be a lot easier, um, but you definitely can get away with a larger brush. Don't let your materials hold you back of, 
I'm trying something new and different. Okay. Let's do this back leg here. Those bottom hoofs in there. Sometimes these paintings aren't the most entertaining of content, but if you're looking to paint things like this, this is this is how it's done. All right, get in there, and then there's a a tail out the back that we're gonna do some dry brushing later on. But so far, that is a good start. I'm just gonna make a couple of marks in here, help darken things up. Let's clean that line up just a bit there. All right, now I'm gonna take my little palette knife here and pull a couple of highlights in here. These are for ropes and things. And on the back of that horse there, maybe for the leg as well. And you know what I may do while this is still wet is we're gonna to have to get in that mane. I may just put just a little bit of something there. I'm gonna dry brush a lot of it, but <clears throat> just something so that it'll start to bleed into the figure there. Okay, all right, we're gonna let this dry and now we're gonna come back and we're gonna add our third dark tones to really make this thing come to life. All right, we're back. This is completely dry and we're ready to add our darks. Now this is what's going to really start to make this painting come alive. Now the first area of darks that I notice when I look back at that black and white reference is gonna be the, the hair underneath this cowboy hat. And so I'm just mixing up a warm, dark color. Again, I'm not too worried about particulars. I just need it to be darker than um, its surrounding colors, and I need it to be on the warmer side. That's about it. I think beginners focus a bit too much on trying to, you know, perfectly match all these colors, and you know, is that yellow ochre? Is that Hansa yellow? Is that burnt sienna? Burnt sienna light? I mean, there are just too many colors to try and decipher all that information. What matters is tone, tone and temperature. All right, now for our shirt. Now the back of the shirt is going to stay this current tone, but towards the front and under the arms, there are some shadows. And so I'm just pulling some of that lavender straight down into that mixture we had going there. And I'm gonna use this to make our shadows. We've got some on the arms here. All right, I'm gonna try to, it's mostly towards the front of the figure here. And again, I'm just trying to move, move my brush quickly. All right, I don't want to make things harder than they have to be. I'll go all the way down there to the bottom of that elbow. And these cuffs as well. There'll definitely be some wrinkles kind of up towards the top of our jacket there. All right. I'm gonna get my paper towel and just touch in there to break it up a little bit. Okay, there's some darkness 
under those gloves. I'm just gonna take some burnt sienna, mix it in there with that lavender. We'll darken it up, cool it down. We'll put a dark line underneath our gum there. And you know what? I kind of want just a bit more lavender right on our right on our collar there. I think that looks nice. All right. Now, I'm just gonna touch it right there. Okay. Now let's work on our legs here. The legs are complex. And so I'm going to omit a lot of the detail there and just work on, again, tone and temperature. Now, I see some darkness here, kind of on that, on that first forward part of the, of the leg there. And then it's going to want to sweep, sweep back and down. And I'm using some pure burnt sienna to get some more interest and some more color in there as well. So it might be something like that. And I can pull up some, some neutral tint there as well. And we'll need to throw that on the back for some of those saddlebags and things. I'll take my palette knife Scrape in again a couple of those highlights. We've got that got that rope kind of overhanging there. I did want to. There are these sort of reflectors on the. Uh, it needs to come down further. There's some kind of I don't know what you call them. It's not jewels, but it's some almost kind of buckles along the the pants of our cowboy that I wanted to include in there, but. That's okay. All right, now, again, just using my paper towel to break up a few areas. Now, we've got to really darken our horse. Our horse is probably the darkest figure in this entire scene. And so I'm gonna be using, this is neutral tint, neutral gray, some more of that burnt sienna. Let's add some water in there to help it spread out. but. Again, this has got to be nice and dark. All right, and we're going to start up here, and we're going to work our way back. And again, do not be afraid to go dark with your colors here, or with your tones, excuse me. I want to leave maybe just that outside with that same tone from our, our original wash there, just to give it kind of like a little sort of halo light effect. And I'm gonna be using that paper towel to drag and create interest in different areas. Okay, that's looking good. Oops, I may have cut a little too far into that neckline there, but you know what? We'll just do that. Make it uh, make it a little interesting abstraction. One of my favorite artists, uh, Joseph Zabukovich, who's a watercolor artist that is much much better than myself. Probably one of the greatest of um, his generation. Likes to say that there are no mistakes in watercolor, only little gifts. And so try to think when you're working that, you know, if you stray a little bit outside the line or something doesn't quite come out the way you want it to, just try to treat it as a little, a little gift, a little chance to get some abstraction in there. Oh, I think that looks really nice there. And that's just some dry brush work. <clears throat> it helps to have an old brush nearby that uh, can't hold much water. And so it uh, just kind of scrapes the paint across. And so if you've got any old brushes, don't throw those away. Don't throw away your old brushes. Um, sometimes the cheapest brushes make the absolute best kind of detail and dry brush uh, brushes. All right, let's add some darkness on the bottom of that hoof there.
Yeah, and this, this one's gonna be a bit darker there. All right. Again, I'm kind of sticking to the same sort of tone here and, and color pattern, I guess. Just burnt sienna with a little neutral tint. Pretty simple stuff. It seems to be doing the job well for our horse. I think it looks nice. Again, I'm okay if my brush leaves a few gaps of light in there. It only helps in just keeping things interesting. I'm gonna drag that there. And we're going to add a shadow here as well in just a moment. Now, I need to dry brush this tail in. I think that's going to be it. I kind of wish... I don't want to overdo it. Let's see if I can't erase some of that dark there. Always keep a paper towel nearby. There we go, perfect. All right, let's get let's get a shadow down here. Our our foreground is a bit too boring. I was hoping it would be a bit a bit more powerful here. So we're gonna let's see how do we want to do this. Again, I want to keep this fairly loose. It's just nice and warm. Whenever you do your shadows, just think of them as reflections, essentially. I'm just trying to draw mirror images of, of what is already down there in front. Let's just do something like that. Kind of drag that through there. Let's darken it up down here at the bottom. Really give that kind of a contrast we're looking for there. And then, you know what? We got to we gotta bring in some, yeah. Add a little abstraction in there. Get some, some dirt and things flying. There we go. I think that looks nice. All right. Uh, let me grab my palette knife. I want to make sure... Again, we gotta keep some highlights through here. Okay. I think this looks pretty good. I, I am tempted to add something in the background here, but I kind of like the contrast of this really dark figure, this dark shadow. It kind of pulls everything forward a bit. I'm gonna connect that to that hoof there. Yeah. I think that looks good, and I do want to make that a little bit closer. The horse is kind of up in the air here. So I want to try to bring in the bottom leg parts of that shadow a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe I'll throw some water down there. Again, I'm just trying to keep it interesting. That's all. This is where you can really kind of, you know, add a little artistic flair if you want. Okay, now I want to see, I might just add just some, some kind of lines back in there. But you know what? I don't like that. Let's get rid of those. I'm going to leave that as is, and we're going to let this dry. We're going to come back and add a few highlights. So be back in just a moment. All right, we're back, and we're going to add our final details and highlights here. Now, the first thing I want to do is... He's got the reins in his hands while he's pulling up here. And there's also a bit of rope just there. I'll do that. I'm just going to pick up some pure neutral tint and just throw in some even just darker darks in a few places.
again, just a few places. All right. Okay. All right, I think that looks pretty good there. Let's get our white wash here and add a couple of highlights. There's really no need for highlights in this particular painting because of the fact that the background is so light. Typically I'll use gouache to accentuate um, characters that are surrounded by darker colors. So this doesn't do too much. It will help within, by highlighting things within the actual figure, but in terms of getting it to break away from the background, the background's already too light, so that's it's not gonna do much there. So I'm just doing this to add a few, just a few little interest points here. Okay, all right, let's give it a sign and we're gonna be done and we can go over what we did well and what we did not so well. Always an important topic to go over every time you paint so that next time you can improve. There's nothing worse than just painting and just saying, oh, that was good, oh, that was bad. You need to understand why it was good and why it was bad. All right, let's take the tape off, see if we got a decent line. Looks like we did. Okay. All right, let's start off with the bad of the painting. I think I should have found a way to make it a little bit more interesting in the background. I could have added a mountain range, maybe some, oops, maybe some birds or something. I don't know, it's just a pretty plain painting and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but just for my, you know, kind of particular style, I like to have a little bit more going on. Uh, I think our I think our figure looks great. I mean, it was kind of the, the point of the entire painting. I could have spent a little bit more time with my shadow. It was kind of an afterthought there, but uh, again, I, I think it's fine. I like the splatters we've got going on to add a little bit of action and feel to things. Um, but overall, yeah, just maybe just wanted to add a little bit more of something going on there. But anyways, I hope you uh, enjoyed watching this video. If you stayed with me to the end, I appreciate it. All of these paintings are for sale in my store, the link for which is in the description of this video. And remember to keep on painting. Thanks.